Chapter 10, Enemy at the Gates. Seconds before you and your mom's brutal execution in the Nexus, news comes to of a Venadi hunting party found murdered in the woods. The only body missing is Cassus. You Clements are behind these murders, it's clear as day. How dare you accuse us of killing our own kind. You Venadis are the ones with the penchant for scheming and manipulation. Don't make me laugh. Almost too quick to see, the Venadi Elder leaps at the Clement, and they clash with horrible snarls. Oh my god, this is going to turn into a bloodbath. Your gaze darts back to your mom, finding her cowering on the floor in front of Astoria, who glares at Lewin with bloodlust in her eyes. How many of my coven must die at the hands of you filthy Clements before you admit your responsibility? This is a serious accusation. Your impulsiveness of your coven is what will lead to its demise. It's a, if it's a war you want, Junius. It's a war you're going to get. Your heart seizes as the story of flings your mom aside to leap at Lewin. Your mom flies through the air straight towards the stone pillar. Ah! Mom! But suddenly Gabriel's there. He catches your mom, cradling her as she faints in his arms. Parker, get out of here. You realize you've been forgotten in the center of a bloody fight. Everywhere you look, vampires tear in each other in a brutal frenzy, howls of rage, splitting the chill air. I need to move now. You scramble for your mom and Gabriel, only to freeze as a vampire lunges straight towards you. Bolt to the side, use my ooh, 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 so this is where your talismans actually come in handy. Fast as you can, you grab your talisman on your wrist. Dissentation talisman! Shoving the heel of your palm into the jewels, you set off a burst of flashing light that immediately deter the incoming Venadi. As they flail and scream, you look frantically around the room. Mom! You fix your sight on the only thing that matters, your mom, Gabe's arms, and run. Gabriel extends his hand, and you grab on. Let's go. Your mom's still cradled in one of his arms. He pulls you up into, onto his back, and you cling tight as the world blurs, the fight fading quickly behind you. He lets you down at the mouth of the Nexus, gently lowering your mom to the forest floor. You kneel beside her, eyes full of tears. Is she just passed out from shock. She'll be okay, as long as we keep mo- Parker, Gabriel, wait! You spin around and Gabriel is in front of you in a flash as Seth sprints out of the Nexus. Don't take another step. Seth skits to a stop, holding up his hands. No, I'm not here to hurt you. But Cass might still be out there. You have to help her. You feel a jolt in your stomach as you remember what Nicole had said minutes ago about the slaughtered Venadi hunting party and how Cass's body wasn't among them. Parker, we can't stick around. We need to get you and your mom to safety. We can't leave Cass out there, too. If there's even the smallest chance that she's alive, we have to look for her. Your life is already at stake and you'd risk even more to look for her? I would. It's the right thing to do. The three of us are a team. Even if you hate to admit it, whatever happened to her tonight, we owe it to her to look for her. And if you don't like what we find, your heart seizes at the implication and you swallow thickly. At least we didn't abandon her. I don't like it, but I know you won't change your mind, so I'll go with you. You whirl towards Seth, beseechingly. Seth, Gabriel and I will look for Cass, but you will have to look after my mom. It's not safe for her in Crimson Beach. Of course, I'll... But your mom stirs, eyes cracking open. She finds her face and Gabe's, and says, her eyes shoot wide open. What? what? Where am I? What's happening? Miss Reese, you're all right. Seth here will uh, take you someplace safe. But your mom slaps away his hand as she bends to help her to her feet. She scrambles backward while gaze fixed on his and Seth's sharp bangs and silver eyes of her looking at you in terror. 
What are these people? They're aliens, Mom. Mom, they're just friends. You know, Gabriel, Seth. Just friends! Do you think I've lost my vision or my memory or what just happened back then in the, the cave? All of those creatures with silver eyes and sharp fangs! And the last words come out as a breath. And you see understanding and horror trickle in her expression. Vampires! The murders in these woods were caused by... Not by these vampires, Mom. Gabe and Seth would never hurt us. Please trust me on this. Her eyes search yours, and through fear and confusion, trust begins to shine through. I can hardly believe what's happening, but okay, Parker. If you ask me to, I have faith in what you're saying. Hey, look, your mom suddenly believes you. Shocker. Thank you, Mom. Seth will take good care of you. Oh, I'll take care of her, all right. <clears throat> what about you? You log eyes with Seth and nod, and he nods back gravely. I'll keep her safe, I promise. And then, fast as lightning, he grabs your mom, and the two of them disappear into the dark. Your mom screams, echoing through the trees. Ah! I'm so sorry, Mom. Listen, she gets her first roller coaster ride. <laughs> Gabriel wraps an arm around your shoulder, pulling you reassuringly against him. You bury your face in his chest. You're doing the right thing for her. I know, but it doesn't feel that way right now. But, knowing time is against you, you shake yourself out of your sorrow and focus on the task at hand. Come on, we gotta look for Cass. I've uh, picked up on the honey po hunting party scent. Let's go. The forest whips by in a blur until he stop comes to a stop, letting you off his back to take in the gruesome scene. Wow, that's actually kind of impressive. Oh my god. The bodies of the Benedites are strewn in a circle, the light of the moon giving everything an otherworldly glow. The blood covering the ground shines like silver. Their mouths. He looks sickened, and when you peer into the mouth of a nearest dead Venedi, you, you see why. Their fangs have been ripped out, leaving bloody holes behind. What in the world? You slowly track around the circle, peering in each vampire's open mouth, feeling a little queasier each time. All of them, every single one, has had their fangs torn out. This is bad, really bad. To remove a vampire's fangs like this, it's a declaration of war. War? What kind of monster would do this? His head snaps up, surprise etched into his features. You... you don't think it was the Clements? No. No way. This is horrible. Maybe Lewin's as cruel as this, but I have a hard time believing the whole coven would go along with this. Still, it's obvious why all the Venedives think it was a Clement. Both covens have been at each other's throats. The Clements have been patrolling the woods because they've grown mistrustful of the Venedives. And then uh, Clement ended up being dead because of a vampire attack. The Clements suspected a Venedi did it. So, of course, the Venedi's would expect the Clements to retaliate, which is exactly what this looks like. But this goes against everything we stand for. I just, I can't imagine members of my coven would do something like this. The look on his face breaks your heart, and all you can do is lace your fingers with his, giving him an anchor. Then, don't imagine it. We don't know the truth. Not yet. He looks into your eyes, holding your gaze for an endless moment, his grief palpable. You're the only thing right now that makes sense. The only thing keeping me grounded. I'm here for you. Always. He starts to respond, but his head snaps to the side, eyes glinting silver as he bares his fangs. Who's there? As, as suddenly his eyes widen in shock. Wait, no way. His eyes flush silver as he motions for you to stay behind him. Carefully, you two approach a clump of bushes as he pushes aside the foliage to reveal. Oh, hey, sleepyhead. How you doing? Cass. Overcome with relief, you move to hug her, but she flinches back, her eyes wild with fear. You take in her injuries, bruises, and blood-stained skin. What happened? It wasn't the Clements. The attackers weren't from either coven. They were powerful, so damn powerful and feral. It was like nothing. 
Nothing I'd ever seen before. I was useless. We all were useless. You kneel before her, desperately needing to lure her out of the panic she's receded into. Cass, look at me. You take her face, guiding her to meet your eyes. At first, her gaze remains panicked, but then she only focuses on you and only you. Parker. Her hands come up to cover yours, fingers wrapping tightly around yours. I thought I'd never see you again. I'm here, and so are you. Can you tell us what else happened? Her eyes flick to Gabe's, and then back to you. After a moment, she nods. They took us by complete surprise. By the time we realized we were under attack, it, it was too late. They left me alive as a warning to the Covens. As if a warning would make a difference. Ben and I, Clement, doesn't matter. We don't stand a chance. The terror in her voice makes your blood run cold, and next to you, Gaper sucks in her breath. This is getting us nowhere. We don't know what the hell they are. Oh god, the Covens don't know. They're back there killing each other, and whoever did this just declared war on all of us. As the two of them panic, you feel an incredible weight drop onto your shoulders. You eye the ritual circle. Gabe, Cass, and I are the only ones who know about this threat in the crime scene as to be hiding some more clues. If I can get them to calm down, we could examine things more closely, find something useful to bring back to the Covens. This enemy's gonna come back. If the Covens don't know what they're up against, all Crimson Beach will be wiped out, humans and vampires. For the Ritual Circle with Gabriel and Cass to learn more about the threat and gather information. Diamond Choice. This will help us save the Covens. You take a deep breath and focus solely on Cass, keeping your voice steady. Cass, after everything you've been through, I know how hard this must be for you. No, you don't. You wince at the sharpness of her words, but under it, you can hear the pain in her voice. You're right, I don't. I can only imagine what that you're scared and hurting. I also know that you want to save the rest of your coven while you can't undo what happened to you. We can't try to figure out who did this and make it a right. Could you walk me through exactly what you saw? You might remember something about the attackers that we can use to warn the covens. She blinks up at you in a daze before her gaze flits to the carnage behind you. Her face hardens in resolve. It's still kind of a blur. We were headed through the woods, making our way out of the town boundaries so that we could hunt. All of a sudden, they had us surrounded. It seemed like they were, uh, were as many as them as they were us. Maybe even more. It was hard to tell with so much movement. I don't even know if I could describe their faces or what they were. She trails off before suddenly grabbing for a stick. Wait, I remember something. The attackers who grabbed me had sigils on them. One had a tattoo and, uh, and another one was on a pendant. She hurriedly starts to scratch the emblems into the dirt. You and Gabriel watch with held breaths. The first emblem. I recognize that one. That's the Noctum Coven Circle. They're based along a ley line in New Jersey. There are vampires in New Jersey? And so, ever heard of the Jersey Devil? I see where you're going with this. Golden Boy, what about this one? Cass stabs her stick into the dirt next to the second sigil she's drawn. That's uh, the sigil of the Umbra Coven. A uh, ley line from uh, all the way down in Florida. Why do you know all this boring... You know what, never mind, bad time. Your lips twitch at the sign that Cass is regaining herself, but the implication of the sigils dawns on you. Hang on. Those are two different covens. Does this mean the attackers defected from the original covens and band together to form a new one? Hmm, that's the case. How many defectors might they have? From how many covens? And why the hell would they team up to attack Crimson Beach? I don't know. Maybe they feel threatened by your coven size? I mean, you guys are a part of a double coven, and it sounds like a that's distinctly out of the ordinary. Maybe there are some vampires who think Crimson Beach covens would uh, use their numbers against them? Except when they... Have they ever done that? We stay inside our ley lines and mind our own damn business. Hmm. Either way, we have a couple of clues now. The story and Lewin might be able to put more together from this. Confidence restored. Cass pushes us to her to her feet. 
bodies might have more on them. Come on. She leads you and Gabe back to the ritual circle, her expression stony as she stares down at her fallen comrades. When they surrounded us, they immobilized everyone but me. I don't know how. They dragged me away before I could even see. But I heard them, my coven mates screaming before it got dead silent. Gabriel's kneeling down beside one of the bodies, examining its arm, grimly looks up at Kaz. These scars, they look like... You lean over his shoulder and taking in the familiar texture of the scars, though you've only seen them caused by a brand before. Silver. They bound them with silver? What kind of sadists are these vampires? Stomach churning, your eyes follow a trail of blood before catching on another and another. You suddenly step back with a gasp, picking in the whole circle. Guys, look at the blood. It makes a shape. What are you... You're right. It makes another emblem. Golden boy, what coven's that from? I don't know. I've never seen it before. Great. What are we supposed to do when even your encyclopedia brain can't help us? Do you think it's an ancient coven nobody knows about? Is it possible that a coven remained incognito during the Vampire Hunter times and whatever came before that? Mm, nothing's impossible. This attack proves that, but I can't imagine a whole coven remaining a secret for millennia that vampires have existed. And if they did, then why the hell did they decide to break their secrecy to attack us? The three of you gleaned valuable information from the Ritual Circle. I've committed the emblem to memory. I'll sketch it out when we get back to the Nexus. Some of the vampires, uh, the older ones, might know what it means. Gabriel looks over at Cass and awkwardly pats her on the shoulder. Thank you for taking us um, through what happened. I know this uh, couldn't have been easy, but it helped a lot. Literally never touch me or say anything like that to me again. Disgusting. Cass shudders, edging away from Gabe, but you step in front of her. Seriously, Cass, thank you. We have so much to go off of now. Cass struggles to figure out how to respond to your words until she finally shrugs. It's whatever. Now, let's get back to the Nexus. We have to tell the Covens who the real enemy is. But before you can leave, Cass's gaze catches on one of the dead Venidae again, and her expression clouds. She won't say anything, but I know she's suffering. Stuck with the memory of her coven mates being slaughtered. You jump, escape clears his throat, and uh, to to uh, still silence. <clears throat> so, um, Cass, I'm, I'm sorry for what happened to your coven mates. Cass whirls on him with a glare. Take your pity and shove it right up your ass, Adahar. Whoa, I was just trying to be nice. Did I ever ask you to? I'm so sick of you always acting. What's wrong? I rush towards her as she sags against a tree, clutching her sign. She speaks through the gritted teeth, clearing in pain. Nothing, it's just a scratch. Her hunting party was attacked before they got a chance to feed. Her energy's low. It's messing with her regeneration. Something in his voice darkens as he stares down at her. We can get her a blood bag when we get back to Crimson Beach. I'd rather die than drink cold blood from a out of a pouch. Don't say that, it's not funny, especially not now. Relax, new girl, I'm not gonna keel over on ya. So you say, as you are literally only standing there thanks to the tree behind you. A thought uh, strikes you as you see the blood streaking your palm, still pressed to her injured side. Cass needs blood to regain her strength, and I can give it to her. You swallow, heart thumping. You know you'd be helping her, but you uh, don't know how much she'd need, or how much it would hurt. Ah, we have a choice here. I'll forecast my blood. It's not a diamond one, either. With a swoop in your stomach. That's only part worry. You look cast right in the eyes. Cass, you can drink some of my blood. Parker, what? 
She needs blood. Let's not act like we don't see the simple solution right in front of us. I want to help. And you turn your gaze back to Cass, who watches you inscrutably. Also, this would go to help you with the coven. I trust you not to hurt me. Gabriel lets out a sharp breath, turning away from the two of you. I'll go ahead and scout, make sure they're not gonna ambush us when we're vulnerable. He's gone in a flash, leaving a pit in the hollow of your stomach, but you focus on the task at hand, stepping right in front of Gaz. So, how does this work? I show you my neck and you bite, or... Uh, yeah, pretty much. Okay, cool, but no venom. Human, relax. I know what I'm doing. But she sounds strangely shaken, and as she reaches to tilt your head a little more to the side, her fingers are shockingly gentle on your neck. You swallow as you feel her breath against your skin, right above your hammering pulse. Her lips brush your skin as she murmurs, No screaming. I won't. You hold your breath, and there's a flash of pain. There's sharp fangs puncture your skin. You jolt, hands tightening to fists at your side. And then, as Cass's lips seal to your neck and start to sock you, feel something more, something disorienting, head spinning, and not entirely unpleasant. Without thinking, your arms go around her, fingers digging into her jacket as you pull her tighter to you. Mm. She lets out a low groan against her neck, an arm looping around your waist, her tongue lapping at the puncture wounds in your skin. Ah, uh, your head feels light, your entire body tingling, your breath coming out in short gasps. It's the most powerful sensation you've ever felt, and you feel yourself getting lost in it. But soon, sooner than you expected, she pulls away, silver eyes meeting yours, her lips tinted red with your blood. You good? Your eyelids flutter, feeling like you're coming out of a daze, and you're not even sure how to begin to answer. I... Uh, yeah, I, I think so. She hesitates for a moment before ducking back to your neck. You tense, expecting pain and that bizarre pleasure, and are shocked to feel her lips brushing ever so softly against your puncture wound. Me too. Now let's catch up to Golden Boy before he abandons us in these woods. You haven't gotten far when you hear a shout ring out further in the woods. Guys, over here. Sprinting after the voice, you find Gabriel staring out into the forest. What is it? Did you find something? He casts a look back at you, eyes catching on your neck. You lift a hand, finding Cass's uh, bite wound already, scabbed over and healing. Spit it out, Aldahar. We're short of time. He turns away from the two of you, pointing out into the darkness. I picked out the enemy's sense. It heads away into the woods. And we gotta follow it. This might be our only chance to track them down before we lose the trail. What about heading back to the Nexus and warning the others? What about avenging my fallen coven mates? We have a lead. Mm, so what? You want to chase after them and end up within an inch of your life again? No. This time I know what I'm up against. They need to pay. They took out an entire hunting party. You're as good as dead on your own, Cass. I'm sure as hell not going with you. Spoken like a coward, Clement. Cass. What about the Venadai back at the Nexus? The fighting bat when we left the Nexus was bad. If we don't tell them who's really responsible, they could end up tearing each other apart. Or worse, the vampires that did this could reach them before we do. They'd be blindsided. Cass clenches her jaw, a battle going on in her eyes. Damn, a new girl. Yep, logic wins out every time. Suddenly hear a rustling in the underbrush and a whirl around to see Gabe pushing aside the bushes. There's something here. Ah! He recoils and you sprint over. Are you okay? It's a talisman. I can sense silver inside of it. You peer into the bushes. Moonlight falls on a small golden talisman in light with three glinting crimson gems. Another uh, talisman. What power does it have? Carefully, you pick up the talisman in motion for Gabe and Cass to step well back. When they do, you hold the talisman in front of you and press down on the gems. A stream of silver liquid shoots out from the talisman and splatters into a tree trunk where it hardens on contact. Whoa. That's it. 
That's what the attackers use to trap my coven mates. It weakens and immobilizes the vampires it catches at the same time. Using tactics like that against fellow vampires, that's disgusting. Mm, but we could always return the favor. They can't look at you, stunned, while you look down at the innocuous-looking talisman resting on your palm. Think about it. This might be one of the only things that could weaken those vampire attackers enough to even the playing field. Take the silver trap talisman, Diamond Joyce. With a surge of resolve, you snap the talisman into place on your bracelet. Bum, wah, 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 wah. Collected the silver trap talisman. Yee. There. The next time those monsters come after one of you, I'll make them regret it. Parker. Remind me not to get on your bad side. Your phone vibrates in your pocket and you take it out to find a text notification. It's Seth. He's checking in. Hey, it's Seth. Any news on Cass? We found her. She's gonna be okay. Thank God. And my mom? Don't worry, she's safe. But you're not. The Venidaios are all uh, over town looking for you and Gabe. You gotta get somewhere safe. Now. I mean, we're bringing Cass back, but... Crap, they realize we're gone. Wyatt. You freeze at Cass's urgent tone and knows her and Gabe standing perfectly alert, as though they hear noises in the woods. Freeze now. Before you can open your mouth, they grab you and jump into a nearby tree. Hidden in the branches, Cass puts a finger to her lips, and Gabe motions for you to stay still. A minute later, a party of Vinidize crashes into the clearing below. The blood's this way. We're almost there. Margo, are you sure we're ready for what we'll find? Doesn't matter. We gotta see. They stop short when they reach the edge of the spot ritual circle, and you hear the snarls of outrage as they take in the whore. What the hell? What kind of vampire could do this? A Clement, probably the same one who made a break for it with his mortal sidekick the second the coast was clear. I swear to God, when I get my hands on Aldehar and his pet human, they're dead. He whirls around and slams his fist into the tree. You're hiding him, making the entire tree shake. But he doesn't punch it. Um, I'm gonna cling to Gabe since we give Cass our blood and it's probably upset Gabe. Your heart and your throat, you instinctively reach for Gabriel, grabbing his wrist. Seeing you wobble, he catches your arm and pulls you against him, wrapping his other arm around you to keep you steady. You catch your breath, feeling his heart hammering alongside yours, and you sag gratefully into his hold. Gabriel has me, I'm safe. I don't know, guys. Parker didn't seem that bad for a human. Why would she be involved in, in all in this at all? Remember when she helped break up the fight between us and the Clements? She said she didn't want the Covens getting in trouble. And she helped kick uh, the Flagstone Cove's asses uh, during the tournament. I don't think she has anything against Vinid Eyes. Don't tell me you're going soft, Al. This human... It's a human we're talking about. A human always hanging out with a Clement. Those two are behind this. Why else would they flee the Nexus? Those Clements are nothing but a bunch of traitors. Every last one of them. And when we, we find Aldehar and that human, we'll prove it once and for all. What about Cass? Her body isn't here. There's a tense silence down below. Broken as Margot spits on the ground. Knew she was spending too much time with that human. You're not saying Cass betrayed us? Okay. Cass looks horrified, and you can see it takes her all of willpower to remain still and silent. Guys, let's get back to base and tell the story of what we found before things break into another fight. If the Clements already haven't tried to ram a stake through Astoria's heart. The Vinid eyes are gone in the blink of an eye. Gabe and Cass wait several more moments before nodding at each other. Gabe pulls you tight to him and leaps out of the tree, landing softly on the ground. Cass lands beside you with a snarl. I can't believe they think I turn on them. Murder my own kind. It's too risky to go back now. They think we're all traitors. We'd get killed on the spot. Mm, I hate to say it, but you're right. The Covens are agitated, and they'll be looking for targets to take their anger out on. They aren't looking at the whole picture, that this is something bigger than the Covens. An external threat they aren't even thinking about. And when it comes back, they won't be able to handle it. 
Which means we need to find out exactly what we're up against and bring that information back to the covens or they'll never unite. It looks like that we're left with only one option. We head after the enemy ourselves. Wait for Gabe and Cass to shoot your idea down, and only when you're met with silence you turn to find them watching you determined. I was thinking the same thing. Like you said, not like we have any other options. Oh, you two aren't going to fight me on this? It's going to be high risk. There are situations where I'm going to have to put myself in danger, where um, we all are. And before you say anything, I'm not letting you leave me behind. I know. I can see that. And you'll be safer with us than trying to hide in a town where vampires are out for your blood. They trade a look, one filled with more understanding than you expected. This new enemy has turned our covens against each other and endangered us all. No one wants to hurt a Venadi and get away with it. And no one gets to screw with the Clements but us. His expression doesn't change, but he huffs out a laugh. Even though you face nearly impossible odds, you can't help but feel confident, encouraged by the matching looks of determination on their faces. For the first time, they're completely united. So it's decided the three of us are going to take on this threat. We'll protect the Kerms and Beach vampires, no matter the cost. Huh. Well, that was short and sweet. All right, everybody. Much love and appreciation. Please do what's on the screen. Very, very much appreciated. Uh, like and share the video. Make sure to let me know what your thoughts are down below. And subscribe if you are, haven't already. Subscribing helps because I'm trying to grow this community. Um, and, and one day I will reveal my master plan for this community. And you're going to be like, wow. Big brain over here. Okay. But for now, I just want to continue growing this community. Um, one day I would like to sit down with all of you and have a discussion why it's not the atypical, um, response that I guarantee you 99.9% .9 of other content creators are going to have. And when you hear it, you're going to be like, that's pretty amazing. I've talked a little bit about it on my streams, um, here or there. Um, so if you're ever looking to, you know, hear more about it or get to know me, talk, whatever, uh, yeah, no, link for that down in the description. I don't stream on YouTube um, because I'm a person who believes that, um, and this is something that a lot of successful people have always said, is you don't put all your eggs in one basket. You never should. Um, so all these content creators who uh, have made such a big deal about them being exclusive to YouTube, yeah, no, you're only hurting yourselves and you're limiting yourselves. They're thinking a very short, quick payday in a contract versus, like, putting all their eggs in different baskets and trying to... I mean, again, they're they're just looking at the short payday, let's put it that way. I'm going to be honest, instead of going even further into it, let's just leave it at that. Um, sorry I didn't get this out till today. Um, pretty much I'm, I'm going through some IRL stuff. Uh, some of it is medical um, and it's making me super, super tired, right, and things like that. So I'm just trying to push right now, trying to get this content up and, and ready when I can and, and whatnot. So, yeah, bear with me. Uh, anyway, much love. Catch you all later. Peace out.